Hear that? This sound is the double knock of a Campophilus woodpecker. Campophilus are among the largest and most powerful woodpeckers in the world. In the forests of Costa Rica, these double knocks are the signature territorial displays of the pale-billed woodpecker. These are the largest woodpeckers in the country, some 37 centimeters long. A very large, powerful bird, it searches for insect larvae under the bark of trees. Its powerful beak easily chips off the bark and tears through the wood. But how do they so effortlessly cut through the hard cellulose without damaging themselves? Well, to talk about this and why woodpeckers are some of the most amazing birds in the world, I have a special guest. I'm about to show you why woodpeckers are awesome. See these scissors? See this board? What would happen if we hit the board with the scissors the way that a woodpecker would? We make a tiny chip. And if we did this thousands of times, we could probably make a hole. But the scissors themselves would be dull and broken. But woodpecker beaks are the opposite. The more that the bird hits its beak into wood, the sharper that its beak gets. What's up with that? In self-sharpening structures, the leading edge is the hardest part. Then there is a hardness gradient going back along the cutting surface. So as bits are broken off from the back, the beak maintains its sharp angle. By having a sharp beak, their beak travels into the wood rather than bouncing off the surface. The beak also grows constantly to replace all the material that gets chipped off during use. Why do woodpeckers drill holes anyway? One reason is to get food. There are yummy bugs living under the bark of trees. If you have ever seen a piece of wood with lines and squiggles in it like this, that was the trail of a bug munching at the tree. They think they're safe under a thick layer of bark, but the woodpecker has the tools to get in. With a few quick strikes of their beak, the bark has a hole in it. Then they stick in their tongues and fish around to find a meal. They actually have sticky saliva and tongue barbs that can help them catch bugs. So woodpeckers help trees by eating the bugs that are eating the tree. It's a net positive even though the tree gets a hole in it. Once there is a hole in the tree, it only makes sense to live in it. Woodpeckers are cavity nesters, so they carve their nests into the tree. Their nest is high off the ground, safe from most predators. Once their eggs are hatched and grown, other animals start to use these tree hollows. A famous example is the Gila woodpecker which burrows into cactus. Once it moves out, the elf owl moves in and uses the cactus hollow for its home. But any woodpecker out there making holes is creating new homes for other animals. They are so helpful. One other thing you might not know about woodpeckers is that their bodies are adapted to grab onto trees. They have two toes forward, two toes backwards, also known as a zygodactyl foot, and their reinforced tail feathers support them as they grab onto bark. Woodpeckers have built-in safety equipment for pecking. Like other birds, they have built-in safety glasses, the nictitating membrane. This second pair of eyelids is translucent so they can still see a little but protect their eyes from splinters. They also have feathers covering their nostrils like a dust mask. You know what else is amazing about woodpeckers? Their tongues. Their tongues are long, like up to four inches long in a 14-inch bird. Their tongues are supported by a ridiculously long structure that wraps all the way around their skulls. This complex tongue lets them store a big tongue in a small head, but it also keeps their brains from shaking while they peck. Woodpeckers have a few more tricks to avoid brain damage while smashing their faces on wood all day. Their skull is a little less roomy, so their brain can't move around. Their skulls are a spongy type of bone, which acts like a shock absorber. Also, their beaks direct impact force down their lower beak instead of up towards their brains. I hope you're inspired by the amazing ways that woodpeckers have found to thrive in nature. With their critical ecosystem roles, the loss of woodpeckers could change the distribution and abundance of other species. Once, an even larger and more powerful Campophilus graced the swamps of the southeastern United States. Its legendary beak would have once easily chipped off bark, and its signature double knock would echo among the bald cypress. This bird was the ivory-billed woodpecker, 
only found in virgin bottomland forest and requiring a large area to find enough to eat, deforestation made it a ghost. The last known birds lived in a patch of forest known as the Singer Tract in the early 1930s that despite pleas to save, was clear cut. Sightings have persisted into the 21st century, but no hard evidence has surfaced. Deforestation across the Americas has led to declining populations in the remaining Campophilus woodpeckers and the probable extinction of the largest of all, the imperial woodpecker from the Sierra Madre Occidental in Mexico. But at least for now, the pale-billed woodpecker is still quite common, and with the amount of habitat protected in Costa Rica, hopefully its double knocks will continue to ring out in the neotropical forests into the distant future. I would really like to thank Biobush for doing this collaboration with me. While you're at it, you might as well also peck the like button on this video. Oh look, a juicy grub, and it's hiding right behind Biobush's subscribe button. You better use your index finger to give it a peck. What? Another grub behind the subscription button for Backyard Expeditions? Ooh, a big crunchy beetle behind another collaboration video on Biobush's channel on how structural color works. You gotta go for that, too.